everyone. Today we learn how to arrange fractions in ascending and descending order. Before that, you can watch my other videos on introduction of fractions. I have shared link in the description. You can watch from there. Let's begin. First, let's understand what is ascending order. Ascending order also called increasing order, which means moving from smallest to largest. So you can see with the help of this visual picture, like this arrow is growing slowly. And this is, you can see that this is smallest and moving to the largest one is ascending order or increasing order. Smallest to largest. Now descending order, descending also known as decreasing order, it is largest to smallest, moving from largest to smallest or you can say big to small is the descending order or the decreasing order. So let's see visually descending order. So you can see here that this is largest and moving towards smallest. So this is descending or we can call it as decreasing order. Okay, let's see how we can order like fractions. Ordering are of two types, that is ascending order or decreasing or descending order or we can say decreasing order or increasing order. So, uh, let's see how we can arrange the fractions in uh, like fractions in ascending or descending order. Okay, we'll see the first case. If the denominators are same, as we are going with the like fraction, like fraction means the fractions whose denominators are same. If denominators are same for arranging, what we will check? We will check the numerators. So the rule we have done in the comparing of fractions, that greater the numerator, greater will be the fraction. You can see the comparing fractions before this video. There you will be able to understand this better. So greater numerator, greater will be the fraction. So in this case, let's see this with the help of example. The question is arranged in ascending and descending order. And we have this fraction here. Now you can see in this fraction, we have denominators same. So what we are going to check? We are going to check the numerators. Now what the rule is? Greater the numerator, greater will be the fraction. So greater numerator will be 29. So this is the greatest fraction. But first we are writing in ascending order. Ascending order means increasing order. First we'll write smallest, then we'll go to the largest. It means if they are saying greater numerator, greater will be fraction. It means smaller numerator, smaller will be fraction. So which is the smallest here? Smallest is 11 by 2. So 11 numerator is smallest. It means this is the smallest fraction. So ascending order, first we'll write the smallest fraction. That is 11 by 2. After that, which is uh, 15, after that 15 will come, 15 by 2. Then after 15, let's see 29, 31, 25. Then is 25. After that, 25, then 29, and then 31. Now you can see we have arranged first 11, 15, 25, 29, 31. This is increasing order. We have written the fraction in the increasing order. Now descending means biggest to smallest. It means first we'll write greater fraction, then we are moving to the smaller fraction. Okay, so the greatest one is here 29 by 2. Oh, sorry, 31 by 2. So we will be just writing this in a reverse order, increasing order. 31 by 2, next will be 29 by 2, then 25 by 2, 15 by 2, and 11 by 2. So this way we have arranged the fraction in ascending as well as descending order. Ascending means writing smallest first, then moving to the largest. And descending means largest first and moving to the smallest. Okay, so let's move to comparing the fractions with same numerators. Now in this case, the numerators are same. These are not like fractions, but we still have the rule. We can arrange the fractions without solving. So if the numerators are same, then what we will check? we'll check the denominators. So smaller the denominator, greater will be the fraction. Now this case is a bit different. Smaller denominator, greater fraction. 
Now example, arrange in ascending and descending order. So we have the question 3 by 25, 3 by 17, 3 by 27, 3 by 14. Now we have this question and we have to arrange in ascending order first. Ascending means we'll be writing the smallest fraction first, then moving to the largest one. So smallest fraction will be if the denominator is larger. Yes, smaller denominator, greater fraction. If we need smaller fraction, then denominator should be greater. It means in this case, we are doing like, it's just the opposite of the like fraction. Like in ascending order, we were writing three by, like 17 is smallest here, but this fraction is greatest. The bigger fraction, why? Because smaller the denominator, greater will be the fraction. But we have to write the smaller fraction. So the greater the denominator, greater the denominator, smaller will be the fraction. So greater denominator 3 by 27 and it will be the smaller fraction. Next 3 by, after 3 by 27, next will be 3 by 25, then 3 by 17, 3 by 40. Now you can see here, ascending means smallest to largest. But here we have written 27 and 14. So you remember this when we are checking the denominators, the down ones, then the case is bit opposite. Okay, so it's opposite. Like, even though we are writing this, the smallest fraction, but we are taking the greater denominator, then we'll get the smallest fraction. Descending order. So, descending exactly opposite. Smaller the denominator, greater will be the fraction. The smaller denominator is 14. So, greater fraction will be 3 by 14. So, 3 by 17, 3 by 25, 3 by 27. So you can just reverse the order of the ascending order. You can get the descending order. Just remember this. This is different from the like fraction. This is just the opposite. Like smaller the denominator, greater will be the fraction. Greater the denominator, smaller will be the fraction. So you can see this again if you haven't understand this, uh, this topic. Because this is a bit different. It's okay. Divide, uh, like... You can see this again so that you can understand properly. Okay, comparing unlike fractions. If you haven't subscribed my channel, kindly subscribe all about math. Okay, now if we have unlike fractions, if both numerators and denominators are different, we do not have common. So we are not going to check anything. We just have some steps. We have to make the denominator same. How we can make the denominators same? We have so many different denominators. How we can make them same? So for that, we'll find the LCM of all the denominators to get one single denominator. Okay, so what we are going to do in this case, when we have nothing in common, we are making denominators same using LCM. Second step, we will be finding the equivalent fractions sharing denominator, uh, sharing LCM, whatever the LCM will get, we'll find the equivalent fractions of that. We'll do with the example, then you'll understand how we'll find that. Next, check the numerators, then you'll check the numerators, or you'll arrange the fractions, and then arrange the fractions in the given order. Whatever the order they ask, like ascending or descending, you can arrange them. Okay, so first step, you need to remember one thing, that is LCM. When the numerators and denominators are different, you have to find LCM of denominators not the numerators it's denominators the down ones okay let's see an example arrange in ascending and descending order and the question you can see 2 by 5 4 by 6 3 by 5 and 1 by 3 and everything is different even though two denominators are same but we can't take them so we have to go with the rule which we have done just right before like we have to take the lcm of 5, 6, 5, 3. That is LCM of the denominators. If you haven't know how to find LCM, you can see my video of LCM. I will share the link in the description. You can see from there, understand how to find the LCM. Then you can start finding the LCM. We have done LCM with so many methods. You can choose your favorite method, but I'll choose here the, long, uh, uh, the common division method because it's the easiest one. So we'll be doing with that. 
So let's find out the LCM of the denominators first. Vertical line, horizontal line, writing the denominators here. That is 5, 6, 5, 3. So first rule, we'll be using the prime numbers here. So first prime number is 2. So we'll start with 2. 2 will not, 5 will not come in 2 table. 3, 6 will come. So we'll start with 2. So where other numbers will not come, we'll be writing the other numbers as it is. But in place of 6, we'll be writing 3 because 2 in 6 is coming at 3 in 2 table. 2, 3s are 6. So where it comes, we'll write that. So let's write that. So 5 will come as it is. 2, 3s are 6. 5 as it is. 3 as it is. Now all the numbers, nobody is coming in the table of 2. Moving to the next prime number, that is 3. So 3 will definitely come in 3 table. So we'll be writing 3 here. Next, 5 will come as it is. At 5 will not come. In place of 3, 3 comes in 3 table at 1. So we'll write 1 here. 5, 1, 5, 1. Now 5 itself is a prime number. So we'll write 5 and then we got all the 1s. So this is, we got the LCM that is 2 multiply 3 multiply 5. So let's write the LCM. LCM of 5, 6, 5, 3 is equals to 2 multiply 3 multiply 5. That is 2, 3s are 6, 6, 5s are 30. So we got the third. So these are the denominators. Now, after finding the LCM, we have to make the equivalent fractions. How and which fractions we will make equivalent? That these are these fractions which are given in the question. So we'll be writing 2 by 5, 4 by 6, 3 by 5 and 1 by 3. Whatever the fraction we got in the question, we'll write them. Now we'll be going to make them equivalent fraction and we have to make the denominators 30. So the rule is with which number you'll multiply 5 with to get 30. So if you haven't watched the equivalent video, watch that. You should know how we can make it. It is very easy. So you have to make 30. What you'll multiply 5 with to get 30? 5, if I multiply 5 with 6, I'll get 30. So if I'm multiplying 5 with 6, same number will be multiplied with the numerator as well. So 5, 6 are 30. So if we are multiplying 6 with the denominator, numerator will be multiplied with the same number. So 2 will also be multiplied with 6. So we got our answer that is 12. 2, 6 are 12. 5, 6 are 30. So we got the denominator 30. In every fraction, we are going to make the denominators 30. Okay. So, with which number I'll multiply 6 with to get 30? 6 fives are 30. It means what I multiply with the denominator, same number will be multiplied with the numerator. So, what you are doing is we are just focusing on the denominator and multiplying the same number with the numerator. Like 6 fives are 30. So, 4 will also be multiplied with 5. Our main focus is we are making the denominators 30. So, 4 fives are 20, 6 fives are 30. So, we got our denominator again 30. With that, numerators are changing. It's okay. We It's okay if they are changing. But we need to make the equivalent fractions whose denominators are 30. Okay, next again check which number you multiply 5 with to get 30. So, we'll do 5 with 6, we'll get 30 and 3 will also be multiplied with 6 because whatever we are multiplying with the new denominator will multiply same number with the numerator. So, 6 3s are 18, 5 6 are 30. Again, we got the denominator 30. So, now again, what I'll multiply 3 with to get 30? It's very easy, 3 tens are 30. So, 1 will be multiplied with 10 as well. So, we got 1 tens are 10, 3 tens are 30. So we got these fractions. Now you can see these fractions have the same denominators. When we have the same denominators, we'll just check the numerators. The greater the numerator, greater will be fraction. Smaller numerators, smaller will be fraction. So first we are going to do the ascending order, that is increasing order. So we'll be writing the first, the smallest fraction. So for that, We'll be writing numbering here. So uh, let's see 10, which is the smallest numerator here. So 10 by 30 is the smallest. I'll write 1 in front of that. 
After that, I'll see the other is after the 12 will come, 12 will 20 by 30. So two number I'll give to this. Then will come 18 because after 12, 18 is the number 3 and 20 is largest here. So I'll give it the 4. So this numbering I have given according to check, uh, according to these numer numerators. You just check the numerator, smallest one will be 1, then 2, then 3, then largest one is 4. So I have arranged, but we have to arrange ascending and descending order of this question, of these fractions, not these equivalent fractions. So while writing the ascending order in the answer, we'll not be writing this fraction 10 by 30. In place of that, we'll be writing the fraction exactly in front of that. That is 1 by 3. Why? Because we have to arrange this, not these equivalent fractions. These equivalent fractions are just helping us to arrange them in ascending order. Okay. So we'll write 1 by 3 at the first. Second is 12 by 30 means 2 by 5. After third is 18 by 30 means we'll be writing 3 by 5. And then 20 by 30 means we'll be writing 4 by 6. Okay. So we have written the ascending order. Descending order is just the reverse of that. So we'll write 4 by 6 first, then 3 by 5, then 2 by 5, and then 1 by 3. So this way we have done the ascending and descending order of unlike fractions where denominators and numerators are different. So this is a very easy rule. Just what you need to do is take the LCM of the denominators and then make the equivalent fractions whose denominator should be the LCM 1. And then you'll do the numbering ordering and then you write the question not these equivalent fractions so the question in the ascending in the descending order but you will order or arrange with the help of the numerators the equivalent fractions okay so thank you so much before that now it's your time to do some workout attempt this question that is yes no question Ascending order means moving from largest to smallest. So either you write yes or no in the comment section that what you think ascending order is from largest to smallest or to smallest to largest. So I'll be checking your answers later. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like and don't forget to hit the bell icon for our upcoming notifications. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.